Good evening, everybody. We're just giving it a couple of moments for um, the rest of our families to join and we will make a start. Thank you very much for joining us and a big welcome to our new and returning families here this evening. Uh, my name is Jenna Potts and I'm one of the assistant principals here at Catholic Regional College, Sydenham. Um, and tonight, along with the Dunlop cluster, um, we will be stepping you through some important information pertaining to your students' final two years of schooling. Um, we have obviously had to change plans slightly, given that um, Water Gardens was identified um, as an access point. So thank you all very much for joining us online as we unfortunately could not be all together on site at the college as we had originally planned. Um, this, this evening, we will be hearing from Danny Jaber, the Dunlop Cluster Coordinator, along with each of your students' home group tutors. So with that said, I will welcome Danny to your screens and we will get the evening underway. Good evening, everybody. Um, so this evening is going to be conducted uh, mostly by the tutors uh, that conduct Dunlop as a cluster. Uh, we have our D1, D2, D3, all the way through to D7, uh, our set of tutors. Um, I also have along with us our cluster leaders who are playing a part. And obviously we want to implore as many uh, students to get involved with our cluster as possible. So what a great advertisement it is and what an opportunity it is for these guys today. Um, uh, you guys will get to know me across the, the next couple of years, I am certain of that. Um, you will see my contact details in this PowerPoint as we go through the slides. Feel free to contact me on that email address at any stage and I will do my best to help you guys. Um, so without uh, wasting any more time, I will pass over to our Dunlop captain, our Year 12 captain, Isabella Lipscomb, who will start off proceedings. Hello everybody, as Danny said, I'm Isabella Lipscomb and I am the Dunlop Cluster Leader for 2021. Today we would like to begin with the acknowledgement of the land. We respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land on which we gather, the Wurundjeri people. It is a privilege for us to be here and we give thanks for their past, 
present and continued care of the land. Hi guys, my name is Ning Nguyen and I'm the U11 Dunlop Cluster Leader. Um, interesting fact about me is that I play piano. <laughs> um, so let's start off with prayer. So in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving Father, you are the source of all wisdom and insight. Give us the courage to face all life's challenges with commitment. And in those times when life doesn't work out as we hoped, give us the spirit of forgiveness and the serenity to accept that which we cannot change. We make this prayer for Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Leila Ibrahim and I bake a lot in my free time. Edward Dunlop was a medical practitioner who completed training in England at the time of the Second World War. He quickly enlisted and served in the Crete, Greece and the Middle East. Soon he was sent to Java to help treat Allied and Australian troops who were stationed there in order to counter and counter the Japanese threat. He was taken as a POW and sent to Thailand and worked on his infamous Burma Railway. Weary's medical skills, compassion and dedication to duty inspired his fellow POWs. He faced the captors with courage and tenacity in trying to improve the, con the extreme conditions in which the prisoners found themselves. Um, I'm just going to leave my contact details on the screen just for a moment. So if you would like to write those down, that is my email address and I can be contacted on. Um, the rest of today's presentation centers around uh, a lot of our college's policies and procedures, just to make sure that you guys are aware of how we run, uh, what is required and, and how we can best support your students um, whilst they're here at the college with us. Uh, so that's djber at crcs.vic.edu.au. Um, and whilst you are doing that, just a note that we do have the Q&A open uh, in case anyone does have any questions throughout this piece. Um, we'll probably save the answering of the questions to the end of the presentation. Um, so if you do have any questions, post them into that uh, Q&A section of this webinar and we'll try and get to those uh, as best we can later on in today's presentation. Hi, my name is Edie Pierce, and an interesting fact about me is that I've done a trek in Papua New Guinea. So the role of a cluster coordinator, um, they will work to help students to resolve more complex learning issues. They will work through complex social and emotional issues. They will work through difficult personal challenges, including physical, social, emotional, academic, personal, and family health. Um, They'll deal with absences, uniform, subject changes and disputes, and they'll have referrals for further support when necessary. Hey guys, my name is Sebastian Ages. I do prefer to be called Septo. An interesting fact about me is that I've been coding since the age of 13. Um, there's a cluster leadership structure that we have at this college. The cluster coordinator is responsible for the well-being, community, learning and engagement. Cluster associate is responsible for administration, monitoring and management of data. And your home group tutor will be responsible for the daily pastoral care and support, first contact for students and parents. My name is Jackie Lees. I'm the uh, D2 um, home group tutor. Where do I next? Sorry about that. Um, so I'm talking with you today about what we do in home groups. So each day we start with a 20 minute home group session um, per day. Plus every second Friday, we have an extra 75 minute um, session we do a prayer and it's a designated program that follows cultural topical and engages growth and perspective we also provide support a sense of community and play games as well um, so the other important thing that i'm going to talk about is attendance so um, parents or guardians if you can please phone the college 
Um, the number is there on the screen, a good one to have in your phone on or before nine o'clock if you know that your student is going to be absent. And it's really important that all absences from um, any absences from class that are unapproved, for example, school approved events like sporting events or excursions. And if they, if your child has been away that you do provide a medical certificate for that day. Um, if there are any exceptional circumstances, these need to be co um, communicated to Danny, our cluster coordinator. And a stat deck will only be accepted on the day following the day of an absence. All absences are considered unapproved with the following exceptions. A medical certificate accompanied by a note from a parent or guardian. The medical certificate must be obtained after a face-to-face -face consultation with a doctor and attendance certificates are not acceptable. A statutory declaration can only be used to approve an absence due to illness for a single day and must be handed in the day following the absence. Um, attendance on a school related activity or excursion, special circumstances that prevent attendance like a family tragedy that's already been discussed with the cluster coordinator, a note from the college counselor or uh, a meeting with the principal. If unapproved absences exceed three classes, the student will receive an, an end and not satisfactory result for that unit and 70% attendance must be maintained. <clears throat> Excuse me, parents, guardians are notified when the unapproved absences exceed three classes and that will be done through sector. And then if those um, unapproved ab absences remain unapproved, then an end letter will be mailed out um, to you. Uh, good evening to everyone. I'm Elsie John. And in interesting fact about me is that during school days, I was really active in sports and uh, athletics was my favorite event. And I have represented the state for 100 meters. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay, um, medical information and action plans. If your child has a serious health concern such as anaphylaxis or asthma, you are required to provide the college with an action plan. Students will not be allowed back to school until one has been provided. Need to be filled by, in by, by your doctor. Action plans are stored in the front office. Uniform, summer uniform should be worn in term one and term four. PE uniform should not be worn other than when directed by class teacher or for other special college events. Winter uniform should be worn in term two and term three. No regulation items, wrong colored scarves or pants, hoodies, etc. Uniform consequences. You should bring a note and you must see a cluster coordinator before 9 a.m. to get a uniform pass. If your cluster coordinator is unavailable, head to student services. If you are able to correct it on the spot, change, take your scar off, issued by a lunchtime detention. Out of uniform, you will be sent home to change and minutes occurred will be unapproved. Parental support is required in regards to adherence to the uniform policy. If students are out of uniform, they will either receive a lunchtime detention or they will be sent home. Mobile phones are not to be used whilst at the college. They are to be locked away during home group at the start of every day. They are not to be seen or it will be confiscated. Students will be able to collect from the front office at the end of the day. Subsequent confi confiscations will result in parental contact and possible parent meetings. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Marina Zovin and I'm the tutor leader for D7. An interesting fact about me is that I am a past student of CRC Sydney. 
Today I'll be talking about Sector, which is our online learning platform. Um, so teachers use Sector to plan their lessons, share all the resources that students will need, um, record attendance, track homework progress, also enter any wellbeing or behavioural concerns as well as commendations. Um, students are able to access Sector Learn where they can access everything the teacher puts up for them and see their own progress in a particular subject. Sector, uh, the, the teacher sector platform connects with Sector Engage. And so this is how you can track the progress of your student throughout the year. So through Sector Engage, you'll be able to see things like what uh, assessments are coming up in each of your child's subjects, things like uh, their homework progress and how they're performing in each of their assessments. You also have the ability to book parent teacher student interviews as they occur throughout the year through Sector Engage. We do um, update formative and summative assessment through sector as well. So you'll be able to see summative assessment where scores are recorded for assessment tasks and formative assessment where feedback is provided to each of these students. We do have a requirement where at least two assessment tasks um, are posted each term. And so you'll be able to see progress in each subject as the year um, progresses. We do recommend that you do log into sector engage at least once a week to keep up with the, uh, the notices and the information that we are posting through sector. There are two ways you can access Sector Engage. You can either download um, the app and the website is there listed for you. Um, and you will need to enter your child's username and password, which would have been um, sent out to you previously. Alternatively, you can use the Sector website and you log in the same way, um, but they are just two ways that you can access um, the platform. I do have a short video that will just walk you through how to use Sector and the different um, information you can access through there. Welcome to Sector Engage. This is a quick video to give you an overview of the types of things you can find on your Engage page. When you log in on the welcome page here, if you scroll down, you'll find a range of links to different documents and items that the school would like you to have access to. Under assessments here, you can find um, upcoming assessment tasks that your student uh, will be required to submit for each of their classes. You can also get information about um, their results and feedback that staff have given, given once they've been submitted. Under the courses tab, you can find the subject and specific information about what's happening in each class each day. All right, next is the dashboard um, where you can find uh, a fair bit of information here. Uh, homework that's set by the teachers uh, will list here. The timetable of your child will come up here that you can have a look at. The other really important thing about the dashboard is these pastoral care notes. So you might receive an email or a text message to say that there's been a notification from a staff member. Um, this can be academic, behavioural, um, to do with um, attendance or even commendations. Um, if you come in here, you can click on the information that the, the staff member has written and it will give you a detailed description of the notification that has been sent. Um, and if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact the staff member. Direct messages. So the school will send important information to you by a direct message. Um, for instance, in here we've got some information about family partnership evenings and important um, early starts for students. Um, there's also a little icon at the top here which notifies you when there's new messages that have come through. You might also use direct message to uh, correspond with staff members um, by simply finding their name along here, typing your message and pressing send and they can reply to you as well. The last one is notices. So this just has daily messages that staff and the school puts up for the students. Um, anything from um, awards assembly information to extracurricular activities um, or uh, fundraising activities that we might be having. Again, if you have any further um, queries, um, please head to the Sector Engage guide here um, that hopefully will have some more information about how you can find um, different items.
Okay, so as I mentioned, you should already have received a welcome to sector engage pack um, last week in an email. If you have not received that email um, instructing you on how to access sector engage, can you please check that we have the correct email address on file here at the college. Um, some ways that you might like to do that you could ask your, your student to contact their or speak to their home group tutor to confirm what email address we currently have or you could um, call the tutor as well as another option. If the email address that we have on file is correct, um, we can resend the login details to you. And if the email address is not correct, we will need you to update um, the details by using a change of details form at the front office. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tim Brislin. An interesting fact about me is I'm incredibly good at table tennis. Um, I share D5 this year with uh, Shannon Kaferin. Uh, I'm here to talk today about the school's assessment policies. I'm gonna start off just by showing you a quick little video. Good. It comes on. The wait, the long wait, is finally over for tens of thousands of VCE students who have received their marks and university entry scores. Among these success stories, an unlikely one from the western suburbs who's beaten all the odds. James Talia explains. Two and a half years ago, Sal al Kassab, his parents and three siblings fled the war in Syria. Saad couldn't speak English when he arrived, but learned quickly. Off the back of a labouring job at Sydenham's Catholic Regional College last summer, he was given a Year 12 scholarship. Today, he learned his score, 96.65. Now I'm the doctor of the school, which makes me so, you know, proud and appreciative of the opportunity CRC, you know, has given me. Saad has already received an offer to study medicine at Monash. <laughs> That's a, a sort of a brief overview of our assessment um, policies. Our main purpose of assessment at Sydney um, to demonstrate a satisfactory completion um, in terms of meeting those VC outcomes. Uh, students need to show that they understand uh, the learning outcomes associated um, with each area of study in their VC program. Uh, and then if students are doing a scored program, it's used to demonstrate a level of achievement uh, through a score or rank. Uh, students completing a scored VC program will need to complete examinations held at the college at the end of semester one and semester two. Um, year 11s, they'll have exams, a unit one exam halfway through the year and a unit two exam uh, at the end of the year. There are no mid-year exams for year 12s. They only have their end of year exams. Uh, students completing unit three, four subjects, they will complete uh, the GAT, that's the general achievement test um, in June. Uh, undertake trial examinations in between terms three and four, and then complete uh, their external VC exams uh, at the during November. Uh, within VET, students are required to provide evidence that demonstrates competency through each unit, so that's specific to their VET outcomes. However, if students are doing VC and they would like to receive uh, a mark for their VET that goes towards the ATAR, they can do that um, in units three and four. Okay. 
Uh, next up is Shannon McFerrin to talk about, um, I think, our homework policy. Shannon, can you speak? Hello, I can. Brilliant. Great. Do you want me to click through this for you? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, I share a D5 with Tim. Um, I'm hoping you can hear me. I'm currently in my car. I guess an interesting fact would be um, that I coach women's football, which is where I am now, sitting in the car in the car park. Um, <laughs> that's a coach. So that's about as interesting as I get. Thanks, Tim. Um, study and homework. So students should be completing around two to four hours of homework per night. Uh, homework is not only work set by the teacher. Um, it can be related to reading, summarising and studying. Um, and good learning is based on regular work over a long period of time. Time management is a key to successful studying. Assist your child by having a quiet area for them to work in, free of interruption. Developing a study plan, ensuring a really good balance of um, study and rest. Keep a record of all work and when it is due. Make a list of priorities so you can obviously prioritise which tasks will come first. Um, and have a large amounts of, um, if you have large amounts of work to learn, break it up into chunks. Um, and always, you know, get your coloured highlighters out and highlight any um, work that's relevant also. <laughs> for your child to have a good place to study, away from phones and iPads and computers. While study doesn't dominate my personal life, I still have time to be social. The key to success at VC is balance. Hold on, Shannon. Uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Alana Petrovska, and an interesting fact about me is that I rescue and foster cats. Uh, here at Dunlop, we believe in community involvement, um, our school values student involvement. We believe that active citizenship and community connectedness is a paramount to de developing young people. We encourage and provide opportunities for students to be involved in social justice initiatives, liturgies, faith in action programs, community events and sports. Each cluster is affiliated with a Catholic organization Throughout the year, students raise funds through social justice initiatives to raise funds and awareness. 
Uh, there are many ways students are able to become involved throughout the year and are consistently encouraged to do so. Uh, we are affiliated with the Macaulay House Services for Women. Our vision is that women and children will be safe and supported as well as empowered to achieve their highest potential. We support women and their children to be safe from family violence by providing 24 seven crisis support and temporary accommodation. The women needing support have experienced or are at immediate, uh, immediate risk or serious harm through physical and emotional violence, threats, sexual assault and stalking. We work alongside them to plan their move towards a life free from violence. We also operate Macaulay House Footscray, Victoria's first purposeful built accommodation for women who are homeless, many of whom also have experienced family violence in their lives. It is a place for rest, recovery and reconnection, as well as a welcoming community hub. And I'll pass you on to Shirley. Hi everyone. My name's Shirley Charles and an interesting fact about me would be that I've actually been working at the college for 20 years. Um, my role her, at the school has been to provide literacy support in and outside the classroom. I'm also part of the student services team. Um, we offer many services for your son or daughter. Um, if they've got any particular issues, they are more than welcome to come up and visit us there. We're located above, upstairs, above the manor. Um, if in doubt, um, your son or daughter can ask their class coordinator or home group teacher and they'll point them in the right direction. Up in student services, um, we've got a number of staff located there. We have three psychologists, Careers counsellors, um, your son or daughter can book individual appointments with them. Um, we also have learning support officers there to assist students with their learning needs and also a cultural liaison officer. Any issues, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name's Jack Bock, and I'm the uh, home group tutor for D1. An interesting fact about me is I'm an avid collector of board games, and I have over 60 board games at my house. So <laughs> I'm very good at um, telling everyone instructions, and I thought I'd start with the additional information. So this is um, just a bit of um, uh, some extra information that doesn't quite fit in the categories we've spoken about tonight. So first of all, just in regards to sector, all communication is via sector. So if you do feel that you need to contact someone at the college, um, sector is definitely the way to go. Make sure you're checking it regularly. Weekly is the, is the recommended time to be checking sector. In regards to private study. So in year 11, students are able to nominate one period per week where they can arrive for will arrive late during period two or depart early for period four if their timetable allows, if it's in the middle of the day. Unfortunately, that's an unlucky student. Um, in year 12 though, all of the private study blocks um, year, uh, students are able to take so they can arrive a little bit later um, or they can leave early as well. Once again, depending on their timetable. And I'm going to pass it over to Satnesh to finish us off for the evening. Thank you, everyone. That skip past. Ooh. Sorry, that has just skipped past that second <laughs> slide. Additional information, one more. We have one more to go, guys, thanks. So if you, <laughs> I flicked through too many. So um, if uh, students are undertaking a three, four subject in 2021, so a, a year 12 subject, um, they're gonna be required to complete a practice examination. And this is in the second week of the holidays at the end of term three. That's quite soon, uh, quite close to when the exam actually is. And we expect that all students um, are able to attend that for that practice examination. Take two, Satnesh, come on up. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Satnesh Lingam. I'm the home group teacher for D3. Uh, one interesting fact about me, I'm a 
uh, avid soccer follower and I follow Manchester United and I hope to see them play uh, live in action at Old Trafford, hopefully in the near future. <laughs> All right, I've got some key dates uh, for you to take note of. I'll leave this slide here for a while. So if you wanna take note of these dates, uh, starting off with the E11s, we have got our retreat coming up um, on the 4th and 5th of March, this next month. We'll be leaving the college uh, uh, on the Thursday morning on the 4th and returning on Friday, staying overnight at the venue and returning on Friday, 5th of March uh, by 3.30 p.m. Uh, of course, uh, due to Easter, term one will end uh, on the Thursday. Thursday will be the last day for term one. We'll have, um, uh, the trial exams happening from June 7th to 11th. GET, for all students who are doing a unit three, four subject, they'll be doing GET exam on the 16th of June. Now, of course, TEM2 is ending uh, on June 25th and TEM3 holders are from September 18th to 3rd October. Just a reminder to all students who are doing a unit three, four this year, you'll be having trial exams uh, during uh, TEM3 holders so I think it would be a good idea not to plan, you know, any family vacations during the time if you're doing a 3-4. Uh, and then, of course, the actual end of year VC exams start on the 27th of October, which will be confirmed. Uh, term 3 exams, of course, will be happening from 17th September to 1st October. All right, guys, got any questions? I'll hand over to Jenna Potts, and she'll be happy to take any questions from you. Thanks very much to everybody who has joined us this evening and thank you very much to our tutors for um, presenting. Um, this evening really is about familiarising yourself with your student's home group tutor. Um, if you missed who any of these people are or, or what home groups they are responsible for, please do ask your son or daughter who their tutor is because they really are your first best contact if you have any concerns and want to get in contact with anyone here at the college. Um, there are a lot of important messages there um, this evening regarding our attendance policies, um, the wearing of the uniform at the college, all of these things we require your support with. So we do um, ask you to, to communicate if you do have concerns around any of the information that you have heard this evening. And certainly, as I said, the best person to contact with those questions is the home group tutor, who will certainly work with the cluster coordinator if that is needed. Um, I will hand back over to your Dunlop Cluster Coordinator, Danny, this evening, who will have a look at any of the questions that have come through on the forum. But again, thank you very much for your attendance and do post those questions if you have any. Thank you. Hi there, everybody. Um, I realised that I got all of the tutors and the students to tell them, uh, tell you guys something interesting about themselves, and I didn't say anything myself. Uh, I suppose an interesting thing is that I really enjoyed making everyone else say something interesting about themselves because they all found it so difficult. Um, I really, really did enjoy that. So, well done, everyone. Um, <laughs> that's my thing. Um, so yeah, so the question and answer tool is open at the moment. Um, I have to admit I'm not the best at using this, but I can see that there are a few questions on there that we can begin to answer. And then if students want to come over as well and help answer some of those, that would be fantastic. Um, so I'll start off at the beginning. It says, uh, why are SACs being completed after school hours? Uh, guys, uh, Isabella, we'll start with you. Why, why are SACs completed after school hours? So for a lot of the classes, uh, for a lot of the subjects, there tend to be multiple classes. I know with methods last year with Green Year 11, we had upwards of six classes and we can't do that during the week for us. We can't have six different SACs when we're uh, assessing at different levels. So it has to all be assessed with the same SAC. So we all do it at the same time after school so that no one has an upper hand or anything. Absolutely. So, so our fairness in that sense. Uh, another question here regarding careers counselling. Um, we have two full-time careers counsellors upstairs in student services. Um, I mean, ordinarily, you'd have to pay hundreds of dollars to speak to a careers counsellor. We do it for absolutely free here. Um, students can go there with any, I suppose, concerns, any desires, uh, and they kind of get pushed or, or kind of guided towards um, whatever it is they want to do when they leave us. So the counsellors are really, really good at uh, working out their pathway and helping them get there. Um, another question, if students decide to do VC unscored, when does this decision need to be made? 
Um, I'm looking around and they're all shaking their heads like they don't know. Um, so more often than not, we suggest that that decision comes towards the end of year 11. Um, if you're a year 12 student, um, I mean, that decision can come quite late in the year. There is absolutely no rush for it. Um, we never want to push students into a decision that they regret. Um, we like to keep their, their options open for as long as possible. Um, but I suppose once they do finally make that decision, then it, there's normally no way of going back from that. But there's absolutely no rush. We tend to see how things are going and then they can make that decision um, what is the official last day of year 12 what is the official last day of year 12 when's your last day when the exams finish um, <laughs> so the official last day is whenever that student's last exam is we don't know when that is at the moment uh, vcar put together those uh, timetables uh, and the students eagerly await that uh, and they mark off as soon as they see that last exam they mark that off straight away normally beginning of November, I would suggest for that, uh, but we don't know the exact date yet for any of those. Um, do students have to register for the tutor services that may be available, that are available? So that is a new thing this year. Obviously, the government have granted us with some money for tutoring. It is something that we're working towards at the moment. We will be putting um, uh, an expression of interest out very, very soon. And it will be for a variety of subjects, starting off with English, maths and science. Um, and then we'll try and develop that throughout the year. Uh, so the students just need to keep an eye out for that and they'll be able to volunteer their time uh, to attend those tutoring sessions. Um, this is one you guys can answer. Do the students who did a 3-4 last year in year 11 do the GAT again? Yes. yes. A resounding yes, yes. So um, <laughs> the GAT takes into consideration the year that they're taking their 3-4 exams. So uh, the GAT for last year would um, help work towards that student's score for last year and then the GAT for this year would work towards the scores for this year. So yes, they will. Um, are the term three trial exams continuously from the 17th to the 1st? How do the trial exams work in the middle of term three? Whenever your subject is, yeah. So it's just like the real exams. Uh, we timetable um, the exams as we would, as VCAR would, um, and you will be attending your exams whenever they are timetabled for. Um, so you might have one on the first day, you might have one on the last day. Yeah, so 17th to the 1st. Um, does anyone have any more questions? That's all I can see at the moment. So I apologize if I've missed anything out here. I think we've managed to answer everything. Um, you've got my email address. You've got obviously the contact details of the home group tutors. You're able to call in and ask to speak to those guys as well. I do implore you to do that. Um, we do like talking. We do like chatting here at the college. Um, I will say now that we hope to um, support your students as best as possible. You can see that we are human. You can see that we like to have a laugh. You can see that we take things seriously as well, though, with your child's education at the forefront. And so we will try our very, very best to make that an enjoyable time. Um, I think we're coming to the end of this. Uh, one last question about the exam timetable, Logan. Uh, the exam timetable will come out later in the year. My advice is do not book any holidays. Do not go anywhere during the term three holidays. Do not do it. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Apologies that we couldn't do this in person. I hope we've done this justice. Um, I hope that this has uh, been uh, informative for you and I hope you've taken away something from it. Um, please do be in contact if we've missed anything out. And if I've missed your question, I'm very sorry. I, I'm trying my best here. Anyway, take care, guys. All the very best and uh, see you all soon.